viewers, what I have open on my screen right over here, you can see the visuals of the moment the attack had taken place. Uh, but right here, these are visuals of the aftermath, the morning, today morning itself. And uh, this is, as you can see on your screens, the Crocus uh, City Hall. Right over here, towards the left part of your screen, you can, in fact, where my cursor is highlighting at the moment, you can see um, the billboard of the Crocus City Hall indicating that this is the area where the attack had taken place. And right here, you can see a portion of the building has been damaged. Some of the smoke is still lingering in the air. Uh, of course, uh, um, you know, there are ambulances that can be spotted. Fire tenders are still on the spot. Um, one would have to zoom in a little bit. I'm unable to do that at the moment. But of course, there's a heavy presence on the ground. Security has also been beefed up at the moment. Uh, you can see another ambulance uh, rushing to the spot. Remember, 60 people have lost their lives. Over 145 have been injured. You can now, on your screens, viewers, you can see the extent of damage that has been caused. Windows have been shattered as well. Uh, earlier, of course, plumes of smoke was rising from this very building in Russia in itself. Meanwhile, joining us on the broadcast today morning are... Uh, Wing Commander Praful Bakshi, defense expert, as well as Mr. Ravinder Sajdev, international affairs expert. Good morning and thank you for joining us on NewsX. I'd like to take my very first question across to Wing Commander Bakshi. Uh, Islamic State has now claimed responsibility for this attack. Now, its terror tentacles have reached Russia as well. How imperative do you think it is time for the world to come together? Leave aside differences and combat the menace that is terrorism. Uh, thank you, Pia. <clears throat> it's a very, very tragic incident uh, in Moscow. Uh, unfortunately, Russia is used to it, especially attacking on the Opera House. But this aspect uh, is very serious. Why? Because Russia is undergoing a lot of political uh, tensions. There have been a problem with the Wagner Group. There is a current going on problem with the Ukraine. Of course, Ukraine is backed out. The Wagner group is there and uh, the, they have been broken up, but they are very active in the various places. And I won't be surprised that they have found their way in the Middle East. That can, it can be a possibility. And that is why Syria, ISI, ISI, Syria and Iraq have taken a responsibility. We have to wait and watch for that. But the question is, you must understand when Soviet Union was breaking up, the fragility, fragility of uh, Soviet system was revealed. The paramilitary forces, the armed forces were fighting against each other, which generally happens when you have a very tight control by the center. Then this tension arises amongst the armed forces, like in Bangladesh. Like then this happened, all the uh, paramilitary forces and army were fighting. There were series of coup d'etats. This is that had happened during the Soviet breakup. And this situation is now quite prominent because you can see that there is a big group which is against America and Russia carrying out war with Ukraine because a lot of Russians are related to Ukraine, same blood, same DNA, same church, everything same. And they don't agree that they are different countries. So they, those people are very serious about it. Then there is a the question of oligarch. Oligarchs are also have their own axe to grind. And then the America, don't forget that America will give them a lip service and keep quiet about it. They can, if Russia can play mayhem into their election, so can America do that. So we have to wait and watch. Conjecturing at the moment is not correct. But these are the leading points where we can discuss further that this is going to happen. But this is not a very happy situation because it is a humanity which is suffering. You may prove a political point, that's all right. We can keep discussing uh, eloquently. But I'm sorry, this is a humanity which is suffering that something has to be done. That's why countries must get together and form a opinion group as to how these militant organizations, etc., must be put under control. This can happen in Moscow. It can happen in other countries also. Pia. 
Indeed, and before I go across uh, to Mr. Robinder Sajdev, who's been waiting rather patiently, I have uh, another such visual right here on my screen. If we can also show that to our viewers itself, you could, this is the moment uh, you can in fact see the attackers, three of the attackers, uh, as I'm pointing on, your, on the screen at the moment. Three of the gunmen were opening fire. And you see what I'm highlighting right here behind this column, behind this pillar. You can see a man, he is dragging another person, another survivor. Uh, the survivor seems to have been shot by a bullet. Um, if I request our uh, team upstairs to adjust the screen a little bit so that it's rather clear for our viewers. Of course, you can see the three gunmen at the top and right at the bottom. Uh, there's this little movement that is taking place uh, where you can see this man is, is dragging another survivor who has been uh, shot. Uh, of course, uh, U.S. had earlier stated um, that they had warned Russia of this attack. Um, Adrian Watson, who is the White House spokesperson for the National Security Council, has stated that earlier this month, the United States of America had information about a planned terrorist attack in Moscow, potentially targeting large gatherings, including concerts itself, as you can see on your screens at this point. Uh, meanwhile, uh, this had prompted the State Department to issue a public advisory to Americans in Russia. Big news coming in at the moment. I'd like to rope in. Um, Mr. Sajdev into the discussion over here, even as condolences pour in from across the world. What is notable is that despite being traditional rivals, the US had warned Russia. Um, so does this show initiative at their end to also combat terror and set aside differences and work together? Now, I, I don't want to draw conjectures over here and, you know, um, you know, think as to why this might have happened, whether it was lapses or a genuine issue had taken place on the ground. But what do you make of this statement by the U.S. in particular? Uh, thank you, Pierre. Pleasure to be with you and uh, Commander Bakshi, of course. A couple of things, yeah. I've been, uh, definitely is the U.S. State Department had put out an advisory, had been putting out some advisories. Uh, see, America, when it puts out advisories, it's putting out the uh, advisory to its own citizens, firstly, right? They would have definitely shared, I think the reports are there that Americans shared it with the Russians also. But in terms of advisory, it's more the State Department telling Americans that do not travel to these regions. I mean, there are, you know, there are expectations of some violence or some such chaos happening. So that's that part. But yes, there is some, uh, if not coordination, but sharing of intelligence of this kind uh, on the issue of Islamic radical terror or any other terror which could be uh, on which I do think that the US and Russia are at least maintaining some contact. They are maintaining some contacts uh, on these. That's what. Secondly, as to why the ISIS uh, Khorasan did this. See, uh, one reason is, of course, you know, Russia has been supporting the Syrian government of Bashar Assad. And there, uh, the Syrian government has been going after the ISA, IS in Syria. So that is one reason for the grievance and anger or whatever of the ISIS towards Putin. So that's one uh, contributing factor, I would think, without doubt. Uh, secondly, uh, I mean, other than that, uh, I think uh, we'll figure out or we'll get to understand why ISIS is attacking in Russia. By the way, within this month, I think earlier this month, the Russian security forces had an encounter, quote unquote, wherein they, I think, they said that they killed six extremists or terrorists of the ISIS in the Caucasus, one region, you know, Chechen Ingush, uh, near Chechenia, you could say. And then, secondly, a week after that, in the second week of March, I think uh, they, uh, they again arrested or had some military or security operation against one, one particular extremist of the ISIS. So it seems that the ISIS has been, you know, upping its activities within Russia. And this, uh, I think even the American, uh, you know, warnings to Russia or the Russian intelligence itself would have known, they noticed an uptick since November. So apparently from November onwards, there has been chatter 
which has been you know electronic or whatever which has been you know tracked by the russians and by the american uh, intelligence that isis would be doing something horrific in russia so i think what we saw yesterday is a culmination of that process and yes this will go on uh, remember isis uh, also the khorasan which is the one so called in charge or in the region of afghanistan turkmenistan also they some of their members are muslims of central asia and in central asian countries some of them especially again the radical islamists they have their own anger towards putin and putin's russia so it could be some of those factors or probably the the more uh, i think uh, dominating factor is that uh, russia's support to the syrian government in uh, in countering isis in syria for more such videos subscribe to the newsx youtube channel hit the bell icon